In this video we're going to look at even and odd functions. So let's start by asking ourselves a question. What do all these functions on the left have in common? And what do all these functions on the right have in common? So on the left here we see if you have some point x, y, if you go to minus x, y, or that point's reflection across the y axis here, you'll find a point which is also on that function. All of these functions here are symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So f of x equals, f equals f of minus x. And on the right here, we see a point where if you go to a point x, y, if you go to minus x minus y, that's a point which is also on the function, on the function as well. These functions are inverted through the origin. So if you go to any other point on the opposite side of the origin, you'll be at a point which is also on the function as well. So in this case, f of x equals minus f of minus x. So let's write some of this down and clarify this. So we said here that f of x equals f of minus x. And we said over here that f of x equals minus f of minus x. So going to the opposite side of the y-axis you have the same point and here going to the opposite side of the y-axis you have the opposite point on in terms of its y position with the minus sign there. And if you have a point x, y which is part of the function then the point minus x, y is also on that function here if you have x, y, then minus x minus y is also on this function. And these points are reflected across the y-axis. It is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. And these points are inverted through the origin. If you're familiar with any of those terms from symmetry or group theory, these are inverted through the origin. Okay, so now, we, now we've described these properties, we're ready to give names for functions which obey either of these two uh, types of behaviors. These functions on the left here, which are the same on at uh, x and minus x, these are going to be called even functions even functions. And these functions here that obey these properties that we've described on the left, these are going to be called odd functions. So let's make a list of some functions which are even and some which are odd. So let's say even and let's give a different color here for odd. Okay, so an example of a function that is even um, any constant, so here I have a constant function, let's say minus 2, that's an even function. It's constant, it's the same on uh, whether uh, y is, whether x is equal to minus 2 or 2. It's just f of x equals minus 2. Um, similarly, we have a parabola here, so x squared is even. You can, you can substitute in uh, x to the fourth in this as well. You'll see that f of f of x to the fourth equals f of minus x to the fourth. Uh, sorry, x to the fourth equals minus x parentheses to the fourth. So x to the fourth is even as well. And what I've tried to draw here is a crude, very crude cosine function. Cosine of x is even. And the Gaussian function that we talked about for the harmonic oscillator wave function, importantly, is also even, e to the minus x squared. And some functions that are odd, we have over here, this is a linear polynomial which goes through the origin, so that's something like x. x is odd because x, if, if y equals x, then y equals minus minus x, that's correct. Um, similarly, this is a cubic polynomial here, so x cubed is as well, and what I've tried to draw in this yellow was a sine function, sine of x is also an odd function. And then something like 1 over x would also be odd, something like 1 over x squared 
would also be even. You can check those for yourself. Okay, so what are why is this important, and what are some uh, general properties that we're going to look at? Well, let's first look at some properties of what happens when we add or multiply even and odd functions. So if we have an even, if we have an even plus an even function that's going to give us an even function. So if we have x squared minus 2, that's still going to be even. That's, that's good. If we have odd plus odd, that's still odd. If we have x cubed plus x, you'll see that that's still going to obey this relationship here if you substitute that in. Okay, so that's addition. If we look at multiplication, an even function times an even function equals an even function. So minus 2 times x squared, or 3x squared, is still even. That's good, so we can put any constant we want in front of any of these uh, even functions and they'll still be even. Similarly, even times odd is still odd. Note the difference here between uh, multiplication and what you get and, and what you get here for multiplying even and odd functions. So if I do minus 2 times x, that is still odd. So we can put any constant we want in front of any kind of function that doesn't change whether it's even or odd. And we can say uh, x squared times x gives us x cubed. Even times odd equals odd. Um, for even times even, we can say x squared times x squared equals x to the fourth. Even times even gives us still even. <clears throat> That's good. And then importantly, odd times odd equals even. So if we have x times x cubed, that gives us x to the fourth, which is even. So odd times odd gives us an, an even function. And then uh, what we're also going to look at in terms of uh, the next video is derivatives of even and odd functions. D dx of e of x is going to be an odd function. So the derivative of x squared is 2x, which would be an odd function. The derivative of cosine x is sine x, which is an odd function. So differentiation changes something from even to odd. And similarly, differentiation of an odd function gives you an even function. The derivative of sine is minus cosine. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. So differentiation is going to reverse uh, whatever the operation is. So, so we can infer from this that differentiation twice of an even or an odd function is going to give us the same type of function back. The second derivative of cosine is minus cosine. Second derivative of x to the fourth is going to be 12x squared, still even. Second derivative of x cubed is 6x, etc. <clears throat> okay, so we have those. We have those important properties there. This is going to be particularly useful to us for the harmonic oscillator and its expectation values because of the properties of integration. If we have an integral from minus infinity to infinity of an odd function, well, however positive it is on, the po on this side, it's going to be the same amount negative on this side. So whatever the integral is from 0 to infinity, it's going to be the opposite of that from 0 to minus infinity. So any odd function integrated from minus infinity to infinity over all of x is going to equal 0 automatically. So if we ever find that we have a function which is completely odd, then it's going to give us 0. In general, functions can have both even and odd components, so we have to worry about that. But if a function is completely odd, that is, if you substitute in the function for f of x and it equals a minus 1 times f of minus x, then it is completely odd and you can do this type of trick. And similarly, if we integrate from minus infinity to infinity of an even function, well, whatever we integrate from 0 to infinity, we're going to have the same thing with the same sign from 0 to minus infinity. 
So the total integral from minus infinity to infinity equals twice the integral from 0 to infinity of that even function. So if a function is completely even, you'll, you only have to integrate one half of it, and then the other half is the same. So these two properties of integrals are going to be very interesting for things like calculating expectation value of position and momentum, other things like that for the harmonic oscillator.